What's going on everybody? This video, we're finally going to start working with a database. We're gonna set that up in this video. We're gonna be using MongoDB. Is there any reason in particular I'm going with MongoDB? Not really, I think you could use multiple databases, but it's very common for MongoDB to be used with Node. It's very simple to get started, and uh, I like MongoDB, so. Yeah. Now we're going to be using MongoDB in the cloud, which means we don't have to download anything. If you want to download a database, you can do that as well. I have grown to prefer cloud providers for various reasons. I can work on the project across multiple computers with less setup. I am less responsible than most of these cloud providers, so I, I trust them to keep my database more safer than if I did it myself. Um, let's just be honest. Cloud providers are either cheap or very free to get start cheap or very free really Caleb they are either free or very cheap and it can also give you basically an exact copy of the setup for production so I'm going to be using a cloud database for development and a cloud database for production either the same database or a separate database you could do either one this video is sponsored by FileStack, which allows you to easily work with images in your applications so you can have the ability for users to add text to images and also apply filters you know make it look nice oh brownies sound kind of good kind of got distracted there what was i saying yeah it's pretty cool so definitely check it out i will drop a link down below Wow, cool. So easy image resizing. So to get started with MongoDB, we're gonna use MongoDB Atlas. So go to MongoDB Atlas website, sign up, and we'll get started. So here we are at mongodb.com slash atlas, and then you can select try free, or if you have an account, you can sign in. Now when you get into the website, it's going to look something like this, and I already have this customers cluster here. So what we can do is we can just start from complete scratch. We're gonna delete this. Now I can't remember if this was for testing or if this was my production database, but uh, no big deal. So we'll just go ahead and delete this. Oh, you know what, I think that was from my company. Oh shoot. So for you, it'll probably look like this. And then what you can do is go with the free option and hit create. I'm gonna leave all these settings as the default. You can look through them if you wish and we'll create a cluster. Now to authenticate your connection, you can set a username and password. I already have an account here, so I'm going to go with that user. And then for this, where would you like to connect from? You're going to want to use my local environment. And for this option, I added this 0.0 slash .0, 0 option, which will allow you to connect from anywhere. This isn't really recommended from a security point of view. Really, you should only be adding the IP addresses for your specific networks that you're connecting from. So if you want to do that, you can add your current IP address. For development and testing, I'll often do this, but just let you know it's not really the recommended way to go. So I'm going to finish this and go to the dashboard. Let this start up. All right, so from here you have your database. You can click this to get more information. You can go to collections to see the data inside of your database. And you can review the security connections over here on the left. So database access, you have your users. So if you need to edit or create a new user, we're going to need that for our connection string as well as the IP addresses. So back from this page, you can hit the connect button and it'll give you some options on how to connect to this. You can select, hey, I'll connect from my application and this will help you create a connection string and we will be doing this in the upcoming episode where i'll be telling you how to connect to mongodb from your node.js application i wanted to talk briefly a little bit more about mongodb this is a document oriented database a no sql database and what that means is it's very similar to json data where you have key value pairs as opposed to tables consisting of columns and rows that would be a structured database like mysql sql server oracle Postgres, any of those databases are going to be very structured. An unstructured database can make it pretty easy to develop your application, make changes over time, be a little bit more dynamic, but it can also be sloppy if you're not careful. So I would still think about what is the general structure of my data. And you're actually going to define this in your code because we're going to basically have some software, Mongoose, which is going to connect us from MongoDB to our Node.js application. 
and we're going to describe what our data structure should be so that when we send data to our API, it knows what to do with that information and how to store that in the database. We will get started in the next video connecting to our database from Node, and then we'll learn how to start building our schemas and putting data in the database. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.